Hi everyone, this is a Barclay Damon Live broadcast where we discuss all things l &E, labor and employment. I'm Ari, let's dig in. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 30, is your RTO policy a go? Practical considerations for requiring employees to return to the office. I'm thrilled to announce that today I am here with Holly Nowak. Holly is the president of HMN Resources LLC. And to our listeners, you know, I'm located in Buffalo, New York. Holly is also located in Buffalo. And Holly and I were actually both interviewed for Buffalo Business First, which is a local business publication about return to office policies last month. So we just wanted to get together, touch base and chat about, you know, uh, return to office policies and some special considerations for employers. So Holly, welcome. Oh, thank you. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Um, it's a great, great podcast. So I'm excited to be um, having this conversation with you. And especially on this topic, there's a lot to unpack, I think. <laughs> There is. And yeah, thank you so much for joining, Holly. Um, you know, before we dig into it, I just wanted to give you the opportunity, if you could just introduce yourself, um, tell our listeners a little bit about you and a little bit about your business. I think that would be really helpful background. Sure. Um, it, well, you introduced me, right? Holly Noack. I'm the founder and president of HMN Resources. Um, we've been providing HR consulting and team effectiveness services to small and medium-sized businesses all over Western New York and in other areas of the country. Um, uh, for seven years now, um, 2015 was when I launched the business. We've been growing ever since. Um, and we have a small team here in Western New York, um, you know, that we provide those services. So HR consulting and, you know, we do work with um, team effectiveness, which includes like building cohesive teams and group work like that. Thanks again, Holly. Um, that's great. And, you know, to our listeners, Holly's company, um, HMN Resources, is not, as she mentioned, located to, you know, Western New York. Holly, as you know, we have listeners all over the state. We have offices all over the state. So to our listeners, um, you know, Holly's business is not limited to Western New York. So just want to throw that out mm -hmm. there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Holly, one of the things um, we, I always have one of our guests do is share a fun fact about themselves. So I would love for you to um, indulge me in that and just give us something fun or interesting about you so our listeners can get to know you a little better. Sure. I actually had a go-to fact that I actually was not going to share for this one, but I just found out one of my team members didn't know this about me. So I'm going to, I'm going to tee it up and share this. Um, so when I was about 14, 15 years old, we lived in a suburb of Philadelphia. And if anyone remembers the cult classic Dance Party USA, um, I was on about 10 shows of that. Uh, we used to, we would, I had a couple friends that were kind of regular guests on the show and we would take the train in and I ended up on about 10 shows. There are VHS tapes out there. Um, <laughs> if anyone has a VCR, I have proof. No. <laughs> Yes. Well, we love a child, a fun fact, like a child actor related fun fact. So <laughs> we've had a couple of guests who have had similar experiences, but I love that, Holly. So yeah. <laughs> thanks for sharing. Sure. Um, so to our listeners, let's dig in. Today, we're here to talk about return to office policies. This is an issue that has been coming up a lot. You know, we're over two years into the pandemic, mm -hmm. summer 2022. But, you know, it seems, Holly, at least in our experience, and I want to get your thoughts, like employers are really grappling with this topic yeah. and what to do with respect to um, return to office policies. So I wanted to ask you just to kind of kick off the conversation in your experience, um, are most of the organizations you work with requiring employees to return to the office this summer or is it kind of a hybrid or, or what are you seeing? Well, I also think like even to take it, you know, a step back, it's kind of a mixed bag. Uh, their decisions are related to their business operations and what they're able to offer for different roles and positions. Um, right. And it's it, like you mentioned, it's interesting to me that we're it's kind of an ongoing conversation. And I think I kind of felt like last summer that maybe, you know, it would kind of die down the conversation. People had kind of figured it out and like, this is what we're going to do, whether we can offer completely remote or hybrid, we've kind of got it figured out, but it's still, it's still a really popular topic of conversation. And I think people are struggling with it. It's a tight labor market. Uh, so what I'm seeing is it's all across the board. Um, it depends right. on the industry. Um, there are, I think there are a lot more organizations that are almost even back fully than I had even appreciated. Um, and then we have other ones that they have the opportunity where everyone can be completely remote. Um, and they have stepped into doing a little bit of hybrid, right? Because they are 
there are some things that they would like, you know, in terms of bringing staff in and together. Um, but I would say it's really across the spectrum, you know, what's, what's out there and what's being offered. Yeah, I, I agree, Holly. And I think, you know, just to take it kind of a step back further, um, you know, one of the questions that we get, and you probably have gotten it too from employers is, you know, am I, am I able or do I have the ability to bring my employees back to the office? Do I have the ability to, you know, enact whatever policies I think is, a, you know, I as the employer or the yeah. employer thinks is appropriate in the short, and we know the short answer is yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, New York is by and in large part an at-will employment state. If you're an employer in New York, you know, you, it's, you're perfectly within your rights to develop certain policies, procedures, et cetera, within mm -hmm. the confines of the law. But, you know, that's a question we've gotten a lot and I'm sure you have too. And the answer, you know, for our listeners is yes. If you're yeah. an employer and you're in New York, you, you can bring your employees back. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can. So that's, yeah, you can, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and well, I think it's, I just wanted to point it out because we have gotten that, you know, question a bunch. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I, and I know you mentioned it's kind of across the board for those employers that um, you're seeing, you know, kind of bringing employees back. And I, I know you mentioned a little bit, and I imagine it is industry specific to some extent, but is there any trending in terms of, mostly everybody back five days a week, a hybrid back two or three, or what, what are you seeing? Yeah, it seems to be hybrid. Um, and it seems to be that that's when I, when I have looked at surveys of like workers and polls, it seems like that's what they want too. Um, and, and we've, we have clients that they have actually, you know, they've been touching base, surveying the employees. What do they want? Um, I think that, you know, obviously people also their, their interests and in what they want to do is across the spectrum as well. Um, but it seems like the most popular way to handle it for those positions that can work remotely uh, a little bit or, or a lot um, is a hybrid setup. Um, you know, we are human beings, so I think people still want the ability to go in and see their coworkers in person. Um, I think if we think about the bell curve, there's a vast majority of people that feel like I do want to go in and see the people I'm working with in person occasionally. Um, and there are some opportunities when you're working in person, you know, for communication, collaboration, those types of things that just can't, you know, we're trying to artificially create them through technology, but we, I just don't think that there will be a mastery of that completely. Um, and right. so there, I think as human beings, we, we desire to see people in person, um, at least occasionally. Right. And it seems like, yeah, the, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I agree with you. I, I think for me, you know, we're in a like a hybrid environment. And it's so interesting, because in the days that I'm in the office, I feel like, you know, I'm, it, it feels great. Like I'm here, I'm talking to people. It's not yeah. just, you know, me talking to my husband, who's like my coworker at home, right. <laughs> who's not actually my coworker, but also works, you know, remotely, at least in part. So yeah. I think you're 100% right, Holly. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you mentioned the human aspect of it. Because that is definitely a consideration we have seen that employers are taking into account. And I think, you know, sometimes obviously employee employer relationships, sometimes I think employees, you know, may get the perception that, you know, that's not a consideration, but I think most employers, at least that we work with are seriously considering, you know, um, that piece of it, mm -hmm. especially, you know, it's industry specific, but one of the things that you talked about, Holly, in your, your article um, with Buffalo Business mm -hmm. First was pulse checking employees mm -hmm. and, you know, employees' expectations. Can you talk a little bit about what you're seeing employers do in terms of, you know, whether they're surveying their employees or what feedback employers are trying to get from their employees about returning to the office? Yeah, and I think it's, you know, keep it simple, right? It's always the rule. Um, but, but I think it does help to ask, right, and to survey and to pulse check. So those employers that are putting that out there, there is a little bit of way in for buy-in, right? And, you know, what we're seeing is that there is desire to be together in person at, at, on some level. Um, but just even putting it out there and that goes for a lot of things like, um, not just the, the remote or, or return to work, but even, you know, what benefits, what motivates people. Um, sometimes we make assumptions about what people want and until we ask them, we don't, we don't really know. And sometimes we're surprised by that. Um, yes. yeah. So yeah, I think just keeping it simple, you can do a simple, you know, and this is what we're seeing just a simple, you know, survey monkey survey that, just right. poses a few simple questions about what expectations are. Even if you're asking about what days a week would you be, you know, would you want to come in? Do you want to come in for two days, three days, the whole week, you know, 
sometimes people, there are people that like to work from the office, you know, um, so yeah. it, it runs the gamut and, um, you know, it doesn't have to be complicated. It's just real simple, you know, like you had mentioned pulse check or temperature check and just see where people are at with it. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, one of the things that you talked about in the article, and I think I talked about with Buffalo Business First too, is, you know, th this is kind of still an evolving thing, right? I mean, I'm sure in your experience, you've had employers who said, okay, we're going to bring everybody back full time. And then, you know, two weeks later, <laughs> right. maybe have reevaluated. So I think, you know, in your experience, are you seeing employers being flexible? Are employers, you know, reevaluating as time goes on, like those kinds of considerations? Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the silver linings of, you know, the past two years is I think employers have a greater appreciation for employees as their whole person, like as they, you know, showing up, they are human beings and, and recognizing and, and kind of, you know, thinking about that a little more um, than maybe right. we did previously. Um, and so I think that's been a silver lining that has actually, you know, because, you know, we had remote work before COVID. It just wasn't as popular, right? Or it wasn't as, as common. And so I feel like it has maybe pushed some of those organizations that were maybe slow to that, that could have offered it in that direction. Um, yes. And so... So I think it's just, yes, I think absolutely. I think, I think employers are being flexible. I think we've had to be flexible because, yes. <laughs> you know, we get, we get designated uh, different, you know, um, what orange, red or green in the County. And then all of a sudden you have to make different decisions about, so true. about whether or not you can have everyone in the office at the same time. Right. Exactly. So if there's anything, I think we've also learned in the last two years is, is, is uh, flexibility and adaptability. Yes. On a dime sometimes. <laughs> yes. I 100% agree. And that was one of the things, um, you know, that Buffalo Business, Business First had talked with me about, which was, you know, what's, what are employers doing? Is flexibility the number one thing? And I think the long and short answer right now is yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think employers and employees both kind of are forced to be flexible in this environment. Yeah. But you know, I think one of the things I wanted to chat about with you, Holly, is, um, you know, you talked a lot in your article about um, employers identifying the why or mm -hmm. you know, communicating to employees about the why. And I wanted you to, if you don't mind, just kind of elaborate on that a little bit. What sure. do you mean by the why? Yeah. And is, can you over communicate or can you not really in this environment? I, well, I don't think you can. I don't, I never thought you could before because I think, we, I think <laughs> right. what I see with communication in the workplace and teams and things like that is we always are trying to do better in that regard. You know, if you ever, you know, almost any employee satisfaction survey, you know, it seems like communication is one of that, one of those items that seems to uh, score a little lower. And that was pre-COVID, right? So we were always trying to do better with that. COVID has made it so much more difficult and that remote work, like forced remote work has made it so much more difficult um, because you have to be really way more intentional about it. And um, the why, um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot on LinkedIn, a lot of talk about remote work and being able to. And I think we have to remember, and this is part of the why, is that that's really for part of the of the workforce, right? There are parts right. of our workforce that have never been able to work from home. And True. I've had clients that are essential and they've worked through the whole thing. I mean, literally talking yes. about building a plane while you're flying, like, you know, within days they had to figure out like who could come yes. and work the line or what, you know, so absolutely, th that was that was really crazy. Um, so what? So the why? So I think you have to. I think the why should not be we don't trust you, so we're bringing you in. You know, if you're managing and aligning people's performance, you should. They should be able to. You know, meet those goals and 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 hold those performance standards. And you know, if they're good working from home, like that's what we're looking at, right? So the why being right. I don't trust you is a bad is a bad. You know, I would say is a bad why, and I don't say. I don't say that as an HR professional very often. Like that's a, you know, that, <laughs> but it's a, but you know, it sends the wrong, it sends the wrong message and it makes it seem punitive to bring people back into the office. Um, but a lot of employers, you know, going back to the human beings, right? Um, how do we, how do we maintain innovation? How do we have those, you know, um, you know, meetups in the hallway where, 
you t- you're just talking about something and then you start talking about new initiatives or ideas or you're working on something and someone else is working on something else and how can we collaborate and just those discretionary conversations and discretionary time to have those conversations that completely has gone away um, in this virtual world. Because even if you want to have those discretionary conversations, you're going to be scheduling it, right? Right. Which already makes it feel like structured and it's not really in the moment, um, which are great, which can be great conversations for like collaboration, innovation, um, relationship building. Um, So I guess, you know, what is the why? You want to make sure that you're confident in that. And 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 very often it might be reflective of your core values. You might have a core value around collaboration and innovation. And, you know, you want, um, uh, you know, people to come in to have those interactions and, but communicate it. Just say this is this is what we feel is important, you know. And I feel for a lot of people because when you see the surveys that employees are doing, they're saying I'll come in two to three days a week, um, and they want the same things. Yes. So it's not as I feel like employers are are a little scared because of the tight labor market, but I feel like employees and employers that can offer remote work are more on the same page than than the perception is. You know, I agree. Yeah. So I think, Holly, maybe we can transition a little bit and just kind of talk about return to office policies and just briefly, you know, substance of those policies. Yeah. This was one of the things that I spoke about with Buffalo Business First in depth. And, you know, um, basically when we're talking to clients about return to office policies, it's kind of like it's it's almost the same thing as when they were developing their remote work policies. Mm-hmm. You know, there's flexibility. You can decide certain things. We recommend, you know, maybe pulse checking as we talk yep. about. But, you know, I wanted to check with you because I know you're, you're also working with a lot of businesses and providing organizations with these services. Are there any things that you consider to be must-haves in terms of your return to office policy, whether what's in the policy or communication about the policy, things that you would always recommend to, to the organizations you work with. Yeah, and I think in the act of returning to the office, you I would almost treat it like a reorientation, right? Because some people may not, even at this point, may not have been back in on a regular basis. So you're almost reorienting people to the office and, right. and, and, and how to operate in the office setting. Um, so that may be important in the implementation of it to treat it as such. Um, and I think... I think a lot about, um, because to me, when I think about it, the remote work policy and the return to work policies kind of almost go hand in hand. Um, So, you know, there are a couple things that come to mind for me. And one is certainly performance. When we thought about remote work policies and the ability to do that pre-COVID, you know, they they very often outlined, you know, things like, you know, because it was treated more as a privilege, right, and a perk. Um, right. And we kind of then, then it became something we had to do because of the of the environment that we were operating in. And I see it going back to that where it's becoming more of a privilege treat, you know, kind of um, positioned as a, as a perk and a privilege and something we're going to offer and something we're offering to be competitive because we want the people in those roles that can work from home. We want to compete with the rest of the employers out there and keep people retained. So, you know, one is one is performance and there's an expectation that you're performing. Right. Um, And the other I think that should be in all of them is also, you know, presenteeism. So on the days that you're not in the office, you know, are you accessible to your peers communication wise? Um, Mm -hmm. You know, and certainly um, and I don't know if this is necessarily needs to be in the policy, but you, you know, make the most of that time return to work. So if. You, and this could be something that's maybe more department or function specific, but certainly one of the huge benefits of having everyone in person is that efficient communication and collaboration. So in your return to work, you might say, okay, you can pick what days, but everyone, we want everyone to be here on Tuesday, right? right. We want the whole team here on maybe one day a week um, because we feel like we want to pick up or one morning or however you're setting that up for your organization. Mm-hmm. Um, but if your why is that collaboration and communication and 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 and, and getting people, you know, uh, bumping into each other and, and building relationships, you know, make the most of that time. And then that might be something like you can pick the days. We're going to give you a little flexibility there. Um, we have to make sure we have coverage. Right. That's something that employers right. need. To, you can't everyone can't have Friday off. Right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So, right. As much as we all like to enjoy summer Fridays in Buffalo. Exactly. You have, such, <laughs> you have limited time. So it's a huge celebration, right? All summer yes. long. 
Um, but you know, we have to make sure we have coverage and maybe there's one day a week or one morning a week that you really, if you're going to have people come in, you want them there together and for the, for the most impact. Right. Yes. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Holly. Those are all excellent points. And thank you again so much for joining us today. I think we've had a really great conversation about, you know, some practical considerations for employers when you're developing your RTO policy or thinking about it. So I just wanted to say thanks so much, Holly. This has been great. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It was a great, I, you know, I like talking about this and, you know, I appreciate um, you having me on and um, yeah, thank you. Of course, we'll have to talk again in the future for yep. sure. <laughs> Absolutely. And to our listeners, uh, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm pleased to announce that next week we will have uh, Maureen Kilt on the podcast. Maureen is the director of the EEOC Buffalo local office, and we will talk to you about the EEOC, the agency, what it does, and some tips for handling discrimination claims. So you won't want to miss it. Definitely tune in. The Labor Employment Podcast is available on BarclayDamon.com, YouTube, LinkedIn, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Like, follow, share, and continue to listen. Thanks. This material is for informational purposes only and does not constitute legal advice or a legal opinion, and no attorney-client relationship has been established or implied. Thanks for listening.